Welcome back guys. I've got some more stuff to share with you today. Uh, we're going to revisit the 500 horsepower 302 and what the story is with that. I'm getting a few questions about some of the wiring stuff so I got something to show you guys for that. Also the transmission and clutch info. Um, my garage has changed a little bit so I wanted to show you some of the progress here. So let's get right into it. Also I have some stuff to unbox over there. This engine is a 1997 Mercury Mountaineer. It's one of the first engines that had the four bar P heads, as you can see there. And recently I swapped to a 351. If you weren't aware, um, if you are, then you know I took a bunch of components off of this thing. And I haven't necessarily gone over the way this thing's set up, but it's nothing special. The engine itself is bone stock, rods, crank, pistons, block. It did blow up on me once, and I had to replace all of the gaskets and seals, as well as the rod and main bearings, because a head gasket on the passenger side blew between the coolant and the oil return passage, so it just pumped coolant into the oil pan. I dynoed it like that, had no idea, until it started smoking, and I pulled the dipstick. Dipstick was to the top with milk, so that was fixed. I did a very quick budget repair on it. I reused the stock torque to yield head bolts. I did not ring it, I did not hone it. I just put in bearings, gaskets, seals, bolted it back together, put it back in expecting it to blow up. And it still hasn't blown up. So we are gonna do a compression test, maybe dig deeper into this thing. I don't know, we'll see what's in store for it. But for this video, I wanna talk about the wiring specifically and kind of you know what's going on there the engine management itself is a stock explorer ecu running the edis so it has a cam sync sensor so this harness that i have on this engine right now i just want to go through some of the differences this has the two wire crank position or sorry cam position sensor the earlier ones had a three wire and so in the harness that's in my truck that i had originally had on this engine that came with this engine it had a three wire, so you can't just swap the top, you have to actually swap the whole thing because the shaft has a different pattern on it. So I swapped my old harness to the two wire and just left the third wire dangling right here. This harness came out of a 2000, so I wanna show you some of the differences there. So things that I've already addressed on this engine are the TPS. So the later TPS actually has a plug on it that plugs right in, whereas the earlier one has this flying lead. This actually ended up being an oxygen sensor plug, so I just cut it and spliced it in. No big deal there. The other difference on the later harness is this oil pressure sender. So this right here has a different connector plug than the earlier sensor there. So you can either swap the sensor or swap the plug. I believe the sensors themselves are the same, although I haven't tested them. As far as the injection system, I am running the return, uh, sorry, return list rails. So they do not have a return line at all. They just have a single feed. This is a Russell's 6AN to Ford fuel pressure side fitting adapter. So I have one just like that on the truck that runs to a braided line. Um, if you're using the stock line, just be aware that these fittings have a very small inside diameter compared to the aftermarket. You probably will want to get a new one of those. So the wiring itself, if you're looking to swap, this might look like a mess. You might be wondering how difficult is it to wire it in? Well, it all boils down to just these two plugs. So there is a 42 pin, which this is the vehicle side plug. And this particular plug, all these wires here go for things like uh, speedometer control, cruise control, um, you know, AC, those sorts of things. You know, there are some switch powers, keep alive power, actually you can see those here. So this is the uh, switch power right here, and this yellow one is the keep alive power. So really those two things are all you need to uh, power up the computer itself. The rest of these are just auxiliary features. Now you also have this smaller gray plug. Now this is I think a 32 pin, I'm not sure off the top of my head. So on my truck I have a manual so I basically cut this plug off and just wired in the features I needed which are um, there's a primary O2 in here and there's post cat O2s in here. There's also reverse lights and speedometer. Um, on my truck, it's not used. So some of the later Rangers actually don't use this vehicle speed sensor in the transmission. They have one on the axle and then the signal is sent to the ECU from there via the ABS, 
module or the gym, depending on what year and configuration you have. So does this plug plug into the Ranger? Well, yes, it does um, on a lot of years. Actually, most Fords have this uh, 42 pin plug. So it will plug in, but you're gonna have to change a few things. You know, the wiring for the alternator runs through here. And if it doesn't have a gauge, then the alternator won't charge, things like that. I'll go over that in more detail on the next video. As far as the fuel system, the injector connectors are different. So you can see on this one, I have the earlier style square EV1, I believe they're called. And the later ones that this harness originally had were the US car, they're kind of more round. So there's adapters. For me, I just cut these connectors off of Dodge Durango in the junkyard. They have these really nice rigid tabs on them to keep them secured and uh, just wired those in. So you will run into that if you're using an earlier or later harness with the mismatch engine. The injectors themselves are the same flow rate, but the connectors are different. So you've got the injector connectors, you've got the TPS, the oil pressure sensor, and the cam position sensor. Other than that, the wiring harness is the same. There is an EGR valve difference on the earlier ones. They had, uh, they didn't have the DPFE system. The later ones did. So if you're looking to run EGR, then you probably will wanna make sure that you get the right harness and ECU to match the system you wanna run. I would recommend the DPFE because it was used on most of these 302s. The Sonic style, which is I actually have one of them here to show you. This is the DPFE style, which uses a separate pressure sensor, and this is the Sonic style. So they actually have a different flange on them. This one's significantly larger. This is an internal EGR. You can only use this if your heads have the internal flow passages. Otherwise, you will need this DPFE. So the ignition system, um, this is your spark plug wiring if you're curious. Um, if you're looking at the top, we've got four, seven, three, five, eight, two, whatever we're missing, and one. So, let's see, that is not three. I have three written on there. Anyways, you can figure that out from there if you're curious how these things are wired. I am using factory plug wires. I have no clearance issues with the GT40P heads, although I have heard people report that. On the 351, I did have spark plug clearance problems, and this is how I got around it. This is a Taylor 90 degree spark plug wire end, so you can get rid of these factory 45s and put on this tight radius 90. That will get you clearance for pretty much any header setup you have. So if you're not familiar with that trick, I would definitely recommend it. Save you a lot of money on custom plug wires or the fancy ceramic coated ones. That's not exactly the most cost effective way to get around this problem. I run the factory spark plugs in this thing and uh, Motorcraft seems to be what this engine likes the best. Uh, the factory plug gaps around 50 thousandths, I think it's like 54 that it calls for. I have ran boost since I put this engine in my truck so that plug gap didn't work. Um, I eventually settled on around 20 thousandths. That's been enough spark energy to get me over 20 psi of boost. So I did start at about 35 and worked my way down. And I can tell you for a fact, 35 is not small enough. You're going to run into spark blowout around 10 or 15 PSI, depending on how much power you're making. So other than that, these coils, they're stock. This one was a junkyard replacement, but uh, no issues there. This ignition system is fairly reliable. Now, you might notice that this throttle body, I changed. I set it up like my 351 this time and rotated at 90 degrees. That gives you a couple inches of clearance on the top. But most importantly, this is what makes the mass airflow system possible. So I've run this Diablo Sport Mafia for quite a while with the Ford slot mass airflow sensor. So this is an 05 up, I believe, original Ford part. These work much better for blow through than the conventional lightning styles. I've tried uh, Ford Lightning MAF, I've tried the stock MAF, I've tried a lot of different things. The slot seems to be the best bet. And then this Mafia, actually intercepts the signal and does a voltage reduction so it gives you more range apparently these sensors although they're fed five volts uh they're only supposed to go up to five volts i should say they're fed 12 volts and so if you have a way to read beyond five volts the stock computer can't do it but this translator will actually take the say zero to eight volt or however high that slot sensor will go it'll take that zero to eight volt and it'll crunch it down into a zero to five volt that the ECU can read. So let's say that this is 
flowing enough to read six or seven volts. Normally the ECU would peg out five volts and it wouldn't know anything between six, seven, eight, or whatever above that. This crunches down your whole mass airflow transfer function to where it covers a broader voltage range but shrinks it into the zero to five volts so that you can actually use it. So these particular things, they come in a lot of different varieties. Underneath here is the adjustment knob where you can change how uh, sensitive it is. So not, I shouldn't say, it. it's not sensitivity, it's how high it will read. Um, and otherwise it's just a pass-through. So this is the Factory Explorer plug. You can get them with a slot style plug. On my other harness, I just cut off this factory plug and wired in my own. So hopefully that was informative for some of you that might be looking at swapping this or maybe you want something really specific you want to see outside the vehicle, I can show you that now. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. So in the last video I asked what this was and we have a winner. It is actually the Tremec 3550. I haven't ran this tag to see its details. Nice eye by the way. That is it for now. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay tuned for next time. I think we're going to have this thing running.